I'm going to call the meeting to order. Yes. Or motion. Agree or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> I think we all agree. Yeah. It's been a long day. Um, <laughs> all right. Did everyone get, I think everyone had a chance to look at the September minutes. Did we have any other final changes or are they um, good to finalize? Look good to me. Go ahead. You say good to him. Yeah. All right. I will get them out to everybody as final and copy Barbara. Um, she's on medical leave, so I'm not sure who. I think the, they get checked every once in a while. But in case you do um, email Barbara Ellison, I'm pretty sure she's out for a little bit. Do you know what's a mat, what her problem is? No, it just came back as when I sent her the agenda, it came back as an automatic response. Oh, okay. So I didn't, I didn't know about it till Monday. Yeah. Um, um, all right. The trail project. Did anyone have any other comments on the trail project meeting minutes? No, 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 <laughs> no, nope. we approved. All right. It. All right. Um, all right. So then we can take that off for next week. Okay, tree planting. Look at that, three down. Um, so we are set for the 7th. The 8th is a tentative date if it rains. Let's hope for no rain. Um, I think everyone got the sign up. I saw a couple. There's. We have, I think right now we have somewhere around 42 people signed up. Um, the trees are gonna come on Friday. I'm gonna meet somebody from either Parks and Rec or from Public Works to help me get the trees um, from the nursery. And then we are going to start bright and early at nine o'clock. Um, and then hopefully we'll get this whole thing done in one day. Yeah, I hope there's no wind like last time. Yeah, that too. Um, well, it's a little earlier, so hopefully it won't be as cold, which would be nice. Um, and then basically what we're going to do is to keep social distancing since it's linear and two sides of a stream, we're going to kind of separate people in 10 or 15 foot sections and have them go up the, up or down the stream that way. Um, oh, I ended up, so there's also an event going on at the art center that day, I will send the, uh, Monica has it, I will send you all the copy of the parking map where we are and are not allowed to park for the day. If anybody at can. The art yeah. center at um, the community <laughs> center? Yeah, at the, the AOY. Yeah, that's I guess um, Monica will send that out to all who signed up. She will send it out to us anyway, but hopefully she'll be sending it to also, but this way at least we all have it. Um, and then if you can carpool, carpool, otherwise we'll just have to make sure that everybody trying to park and get out of the way of what's going on. The event I think is from 12 to two. So we're gonna be at the tail end of it. Well, there's a, uh... Oh, okay, you're talking about that other event that's going on. Yeah, the event that's going on at the at the art center is from 12 yeah. to 2. I had a discussion with Monica today about the Arboretum, which we'll get into next, but she had mentioned that as well. Uh, but uh, I think the number of volunteers I found at this stage, pretty impressive. Oh, uh, yeah, for like, I think she put it up has. yesterday and there were like 25 volunteers already. Yeah, right. that's a big problem. <laughs> So, yeah, so yeah, I, I think so, you're right. We got another three weeks to go as well. Yeah. So, um, okay. That's about it for the tree planting arboretum. Okay. All right. Uh, firstly, uh, Jean and I have plans to go to New England on November 4th. Uh, I was hoping that the tree planting was going to be occurring in mid to late October. So unfortunately, uh, we will not be able to attend, but since we've been trying to do this four or five times before and have been stymied, uh, the odds aren't very good about us leaving again, okay? Uh, if you're here, show up. If you're not, it's fine. Okay. Well, you know, I really- I'm allowed to go, it's all right. I know, but I really enjoyed doing that too. Uh, last year, you know, pointing out uh, the planning procedures to the people, 
And, uh, you know, the people who showed up, I think, were really nice and very pleasant. And it was kind of a fun day. Uh, but anyway, I talked to uh, Monica about the Arboretum. And what I had suggested to her is that, you know, if she's having trouble getting this arborist, that maybe uh, myself, uh, Monica, and you go out there and take a look. Uh, but... Anyway, uh, she didn't think it was practical to do the Arboretum plantings at the same time as the uh, Patterson planting uh, because they're in two different locations. She's saying, you know, they're, they're uh, short of uh, uh, municipal labor. And, uh, you know, I talked to her and possibly uh, this could go into next spring. I would not have an issue with it going uh, till next spring. I was, yeah, it's it's going to be starts. too late to get something out there. And I, I don't want to plant it too late in the winter. And at that point, we're probably better off doing it in the spring anyway. Yeah, I think you're right. Plus the fact this is not like the Patterson plantings. Uh, these are like heritage trees. They're going to be a lot bigger. The planting has to be a little more carefully done. Uh, so again, you know, I hate putting stuff like this off because it seems that, you know, we've put this off once or twice before. Uh, but anyway, I think it's probably more realistic to do in the springtime. And then Linda, you and I can get together too uh, and discuss and find out where we can procure these trees and we can have every, maybe in January, or February, we start, discussing this and then maybe in April we can have the trees delivered and planted maybe in late April. Uh, but uh, there's also, I talked to her about the specific uh, species and that's where she wanted the uh, arborist involved. But I told her uh, that you have tons of experience in this field Linda, and, uh, and I have some experience uh, so uh, we, are, we're, we were actually talking about replacing the linden and the chestnut oak with a hickory and uh, with a, some form of birch, which birch might be hard to find big, which, well, maybe two and a half caliper, two and a half inches. That's what we're talking about. And, and we're flexible. It doesn't have to be that. But those that, fit, that, I know I just know. Don't mind my cats in the background. Um, okay. the, the, one of them's going to kill one of the other ones. Um, <laughs> um, I just know trying to order hickories for what I do is always difficult. So okay. that's the only one, like it just, I'm not sure. I mean, I'll, I'll start looking now, but I'm not sure if that particular species is going to be. Good. All right. And it doesn't specifically have to be a hickory. I selected that because it was appropriate under the uh, particular type of forest. If you remember this Compass Arboretum uh, envisions four distinct, uh, you know, tree plantings or uh, types of forest, I guess is a better way of describing it. And the uh, hickory did fit in with the climax forest and the birch fit in with, I think the emerging or whatever that was. So, uh, again, this is not casting concrete. I mean, if there's, uh, you get thinking about it, I'll get thinking about it, and maybe we can come up with a, uh, uh, you know, a, another alternative. So, and I think Monica is much more comfortable with this too. Uh, and she, she also said that, you know, we, we, we are short some people. Uh, and I told her that plan that I had, I said, we have 10,000 whole households in Lower Makefield Township. Uh, I think we should hire another six maintenance people and it would cost each of us $36 a year. And uh, so she, she was quiet for a second, but said something about, well, I'm not sure now is the right time to, you know, spend more money. I was being a little, uh, you know, facetious about it, maybe joking a little, but, um, I think it's important. I think there is a shortage of maintenance in our township and the price to taxpayers to hire more people is incredibly small. It's minor, you know, I mean, for 36 bucks, we hire six people. 
Uh, but anyway, uh, we're going to talk more about that. Uh, she also said that uh, she wasn't too crazy about, you know, mulching uh, the trees. But uh, in Patterson, I don't know what, they're going to be smaller trees. So are we thinking about mulching those or? I thought we were. I thought the whole plan, because that's what we did with Kaola. We we were going to use the mulch that was in the piles right there. I mean, I don't know that the, the soil is going to be a little different. Um, I mean, I don't know what the soil is going to be, but I would imagine the soil is going to be at least a little better than it was at the ball fields because the ball fields are basically an area right. that's walked around more. There probably wasn't too much topsoil. I'm hoping there's, if there's more topsoil here, maybe we won't have to worry about it. Well, that, you know, remains to be seen, I guess. To me, the mulching is essential. It's real, real important. I told her that too. She's concerned with the labor uh, associated to that. But, you know, if you don't have the mulch, uh, there's several issues. And one of the main ones is you start weed whacking and, uh, you know, killing these trees. But anyway, uh, we can uh, talk with uh, her more about that down the line. I suggested that we also just hire at least one or two people uh, and their sole responsibility is trees. And she said that they're actually in the process of training a couple of their people right now. Uh, one of them I think is a tree tender and that might be the fellow who we introduced to that concept several years ago when we had the horticulture society here. But anyway, uh, you want to get out of here at 6.15, I'm, and so do we, and I'm talking too damn much, so... Uh, and there's Paul. Paul's here. Hi, Paul. Hi, Paul. Hello. Hi. Uh, <laughs> are we going to have wheelbarrows at Patterson Farm to move the mulch? I, I, I'm not exactly sure. I need to find out how she's going to do it. I think last year... Well, yeah, last year we had wheelbarrows, but then we, they had a backhoe. Um... I still got to figure out what's going on if they're going to, if we're going to dig the holes the day before or the, yeah, the day before when the trees get there, which I'm hoping, um, cause it'll make it go a lot faster. Yeah. yeah um, I think we should definitely uh, impress on her that mulch is essential and not optional. Right. So, I mean, the mulch is right there. So yeah, exactly. Easy to, to move. So yeah. um, I still have to have other conversations with her about, Hand sanitizer and porta potty and all that other stuff. So, um, right. what about shovels? Everyone, because of COVID, everyone has to bring their own. So, don't bring extra ones. Don't bring extra ones. I repaired the two that got broken last time. <laughs> um, but no, we're not sharing any equipment this time. So, it, it's clearly stated in the sign up everyone is to bring their own gloves if they want clipper, whatever they have, shovels, hand shovels, whatever, um, just bring your own. I don't think Monica, as far as the mulch is concerned, is that concerned initially. I just think when we get into maintenance down the road, uh, that's where she might have an issue. But I think we certainly have to talk to her more about the benefits of mulching, uh, you know, down the road, so. Okay. Uh, also, we have uh, a fair enough money, uh, amount of money in the tree bank. Uh, can't some of that be used for maintenance of, of the trees we are planting? You know, I don't know. No idea. You remember, Alan, when we set, the, we set the tree bank up, and I thought it was just to purchase trees, but there might be some verbiage in there about uh, maintenance. I'm not sure. It's not we can... Uh, I'm sure we could probably do that. I mean, it's been spent on a lot of other things that are a lot worse. I mean, the Memorial Park, remember the Arboretum, we say yeah. and James spent a lot of money on administrative things and signage and things, not on the trees, the actual trees. But yeah, I think that could get justified. We could, we could uh, transfer it for overtime costs and then they can't get crucified for spending money and exceeding you know and screwing the taxpayers <laughs> yeah so I mean, you bring up a good point though uh because that could yeah you know, we have a lot of money in the tree how much do we have now alan oh right now i don't know but it's probably around a hundred thousand or something like that okay i thought it was even more than that but still a hundred thousand is a uh 
pretty substantial sum. I mean, you can do a lot of mulching, uh, you know, for, for that kind of money. So, and pruning too. Yeah. So. I will talk to her about that um, in the next week or two. Um, like I said, I have to get back with her to just tidy up all the loose ends before this whole planting starts. Um, okay, land use. Okay, three plans, three land use plans. To talk about first the Timco property. We got out that letter that recommended the property, which is at the corner of Edgewood and Sandy Run Roads, be purchased for open space. Um, I was hoping Fred would be on the call because I wanted to ask him if they had considered that because I haven't heard anything back. It was supposed to be discussed with the zoning uh, board at their next meeting, which what had been scheduled, it's actually April or October 6th, but they didn't hold it. So I don't know the status of it right now. Maybe it'll get discussed at their next meeting on October 20th. We'll find out. But um, they're still trying to get the zoning variances from the resource protection requirements. So uh, yeah, hopefully we'll find out more about it when it goes before the zoning board, if and when it does. Hopefully it'll go away, but you never know. Mm. That's status of that. The next one, um, actually you should change this uh, to Pickett's, Pickett Preserve, because it's no longer the mixed use overlay ordinance. That was approved. Oh, okay. Back in August, I guess it was. So they've submitted their preliminary land development plans. Uh, we got the link on September 14th, and I think I sent it out to everybody. And I don't know if anybody's looked at it, but it's massive. I mean, there's over a thousand pages of documents when you look at the environmental impact assessment, the stormwater management, and a variety of other documents they submitted. And there's about a hundred pages of drawings. So it's large. I don't know if, yeah, if anybody else has started looking at it. I, I've got started into it. I got maybe five comments right now, mm -hmm. but I need a lot more time. And I emailed Jim Majewski and asked him when he wanted our comments because I had heard at the last Board of Supervisor meeting that Remy Vernick, the um, township engineer, they're going to complete their review this week which is really fast because that's like in a month and this this application is at least twice as big as any i've seen in the last 10 years <laughs> it's big yes. so i emailed jim majewski and asked him when he wanted our comments and he said later this week and i sent mm -hmm. back an email saying that's you know that really can't be done to review something like this as big as this in a month you know, a volunteer committee. We need more time than that. But it, so I haven't heard back. But um, I'm hoping maybe at the end of this month get a draft out of some comments I can send out to everybody. Uh, you and said the preliminary plans were approved, right? No. Okay. no. This is the first actual development plans. Everything else was associated with the mixed use ordinance. Right. Okay. I mean, they had a concept for the development that went into that, but these are details. This is, you know, you should look at it. It's, it's something I'm some of the issues that I've come up with already. Uh, I mentioned it last meeting, the tree replacement ordinance. Mm -hmm. They, um, they're taking down like 380 trees greater than 10 inches in diameter. It's a lot more than I thought would be up there. So they owe something like 1,600 replacement trees. They want to plan about 700 on site. So they owe about 980 replacement trees. And of course, they want to get a waiver from that. That's in the waiver letter. <laughs> and so, and no so, surprise. Yeah. At the kind of cost. <laughs> yeah. And the thing is, I, I'm looking in the environmental impact assessment. This project is going to be assessed. They say it's going to be assessed, which is the cost of it, at $106 million. This is huge, this thing. Right. And 
know, putting a six point five million into improving the roads in the area because of the traffic congestion. So they would have to pay three hundred thousand, I think it is, for tree replacement. So we're going to put it in that context. That, <laughs> well, and drop in the bucket. Right. Yeah. Right. Well, has, the, has the traffic committee also um, gotten a copy of this? I'm sure they have. The tra traffic yeah. impact? Yeah. In fact, they, um, the, their meeting is at 7.30 tonight, and they're, that's the only thing on their agenda. They've, they have been looking at all of those millions of pages, too. In the, yeah. So... They didn't submit anything new about traffic in this September 11th preliminary plan. I guess it's they're depending on what they submitted for the mixed use ordinance. They submitted in July, I think it was. Well, let them know if they want any comments, Gene. I can send them some. I was going to make a few in our letter because traffic congestion does have an impact on the environment. And um, right. I should point out. Okay. That. Yeah. So that and another comment is the clock tower is going to be 80 feet tall. And that's rather large. We might want to make a comment on that. And the thing is, I looked at the train around there. And it, if you're on Stony Hill Road, that's lower than where the Wegmans is going to be. So it's going to look 94 feet high from Stony Hill Road. So that, that's fairly high. And does it? Anybody know the heights of structures nearby Lower Makefield? That I'd like to find a comparison, to something that's that height, so we could people could get an idea of whether it's appropriate for that location. Well, you got you got the Hampton in there, right at three thirty two yeah, in well, Township yeah, Line. Close. I think you're going to have to go to another township to find something structure that's eighty feet tall, because we have a ordinance that limits them to 50 feet so how tall is that um you know that oh the sort of um in on um oxford valley road the middle the water tower the water tower no the middle town flashing picture oh, the, thing <laughs> the oh i mean the bulletin board yeah, the new Oxford Valley Road and, and Business Route Run, Lincoln Highway. Right. Ugly. I mean, that's huge, isn't it? Yeah. I could call them and find out. I could call Middletown Township. Yeah. Yeah. It's, uh, it's big and ugly. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah, we just need a comparison, that's all. That might yeah. Work. Alan, if you can't get through to anybody there, Anna Payne will get back to you. She's on the Board of Supervisors there now. Okay. She's uh, Dan Masegli's assistant. What's her name? Anna? Anna Payne. <laughs> Great name. <laughs> All right. Okay. So that'll be another comment. And there are a few other things. There's a few non-native trees they want to plant, some Siberian <laughs> spruces and Colorado spruce and one other. <laughs> but, yeah, hopefully I'll get something out to you people at the end of the month. That's my goal. Okay. And then the last is the Pennsylvania American Water Booster Pump, which is right between Kaola Fields and the Fred Allen softball fields. You know where that tower is? You're right. Yeah. Okay. And I sent out comments on that on October 9th. So if you want to look at those, you can. It's mostly about tree removal. They want to enlarge the driveway to 20 feet wide and then i'm just wondering why they needed that wide um for construction equipment that's pretty wide i don't know any trucks 20 feet wide but bulldozers uh backhoes uh cranes i don't know it, this no, I don't think, discuss i don't think any of those are 20 foot wide yeah right? 20 is, feet is pretty wide. gravel now or yeah they're gonna keep except for at the entrance, it's going to be paved, but then it'll be gravel all the way back. This was discussed at the planning commission meeting on Monday, and it wasn't necessarily to review the plan to rec make recommendations to the supervisor, but apparently they need a special use um, exemption from the zoning board, and so they have to go to the zoning board to get that. I, I don't even know what the, the exemption's for. 
But interesting enough, all that is on township line or township property. Only the driveway is on their property. So they're going to be building this booster station on township land. And they're going to be, they want to, at least the plans show now them taking it da down about, I don't know what it was, 4,000 square feet of trees, township trees. So that's what our comments about that redesign it. So you don't have to do that. So that's the status of that one. Um, so I assume it'll go back to the planning commission once it gets its um, special use approved. So. What did you say about October 9th, Alan? October 9th, we sent out a comment letter. I'm surprised you didn't know that, Gene. Did you read all my comment letters? <laughs> yes. No, I didn't. I never memorized them. Yeah. I forgot. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, I'm not sure why Jim Majewski wanted us to submit our comments on this by the end of this week, because it seems like it still has a ways to go, but we did, so that one's done for now. And I don't know of any other projects, so that's it for land use. All right, recycling. We had the Styrofoam recycling event, October 31st. Right. Um, we need um, I mean, everything set up for that, right? No. <laughs> oh no. Well, we. I saw have... styrofoam from the last one. I have to bring. Yeah, Why? I'm bring a lot too. <laughs> we, we need at least two or three people there during the event. Um, I'll be there, and <laughs> I'll be there. I'll, be, I'll there. be there. Okay, good, Paul. So we got three, and anybody else can All come. Time. I'm pretty sure I can be there. Great. All right. Be I can be there fun. also if you need that many people. Yeah. yeah, I have my mask, got my gloves already. Show up. Yeah, I've got the signs that you made, Jim, from a couple collections ago, Starfoam collections ago, routing the traffic. Remember that? Uh, They're in my garage there. So I'll bring those. I'll probably be there about 930, and I'll probably contact um, Mark a few days before just to remind him that we need a van. Make sure the exact solar ban is there. Mark Portman. All right. We'll do that in publicity. Thanks for sending out the newsletter, Paul. That's good. And um, Jean, have you got articles in lots of newspapers? I, I uh, have something in coming up in the Courier. We, right. missed, the, we missed Yardley Living and Yardley um, Voice. Is that what it, yeah, Yardley Voice, because we, uh, you know, we couldn't get a definite date soon enough. Um, so, yeah, so the Courier is in. All right, I don't know if anybody's put up flyers. I get back into town a week from tomorrow, and I'll, I'll go around and put up a bunch of flyers. <laughs> And I'll post it up on Facebook on our various yeah. sites. Assume you and next door, already, right? Next door, may maybe it'll be a pleasant distraction for a change, and that's a show um, vitriol. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I've, post I've posted it on all the township uh, community pages uh, for Facebook pages. Yeah, that's and I can great. do a reminder uh, maybe the week of the event. Yeah, maybe on Monday or something. That'd be yeah. great. That's yeah. very effective. All right, so sounds like we got all the boxes checked now. So October 31st, wear your Halloween costumes. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a good idea. It's Halloween. Yeah. yeah. It's my it favorite is. holiday. Yeah. Is it? It's really it really is. Oh. You have no idea. My house is already decorated. My house has been decorated for a month and a half. <laughs> really my favorite really. holiday. <sighs> I digress. Uh, I wanted to say something about um, the Raffer Raftery girls. Remember Raftery sisters who were going to um, do that kind of assessment of, of recycling in the township, in the parks? Mm -hmm. And they were going to go around all the parks and, and see, you know, in like trash. Right? That we don't have any, <laughs> we don't have any recycling bins anywhere. 
But at any rate, they, um, I called her and she said, I had heard nothing for a long time. And so I thought they hadn't done anything, but she said they did get all of their information, but they're, she's putting it down on paper now. And, and she does that. Uh, uh, <coughs> Apparently, part of her job is assessing recycling. And um, so she said, you know, she had a lot of COVID type problems and uh, she would get it to us at some point soon. So that'll be interesting to see because every time I go in any of the, the township parks, all I see is trash all over the place and trash in the recycling bins and that shouldn't be that way but uh another thing is that i i mentioned briefly last time that i felt last year i was i was um aware of how many pumpkins there were everywhere and that we're going to end up in the landfill. So I had thought at the time that I would, when it, you know, th this fall, I would try to um, do at least some research into what other things that we can do with pumpkins. And, and I actually don't know whether pumpkins are, are, I mean, I don't know if maybe they, they um, compost quickly or maybe they're not a big problem, but we certainly have an awful lot of them at the end of the, you know, of October, November. So I got in touch with Sandy Guzikowski and she, um, she said she agrees that something better needs to be done with the, with the pumpkins. And she, I was hoping she would say she would take them because a farmer who has plenty of land drop off place and you could take your, you know, pumpkins as long as they weren't painted on or there wasn't wax on them and um, and they could, you know, they could just uh, be part of the earth. But um, she did not volunteer. So I'm, I'm going to try to, she suggested getting in touch with Shady Brook or Charlene to see if they would, would do it. And what she said is the very best thing is for them all to be cut up and composted that way. So that's what I do. That's what I do. Yeah, yeah. Um, I wonder if a um, scout group. I mean, if we could find a place, I wonder if a scout group would want to spend spend a couple of days cutting up pumpkins. Mm. I mean, you know, they've probably done worse things. Well, we <laughs> have an uh, LMT uh, based uh, composting company, the Kona Compost people they might be able to uh we'll be happy to take it uh, who, what's that company the, company the, that suzanne uses yeah that that's Kona compost and that oh. the person is a lmt resident the, the lady who owns it oh uh, really what was the name of that i somewhere k-o-n-a oh kona compost yeah that's a good idea talk to them thanks yeah i'll do that i'll call them Good. So we'll see what happens. Um, I looked into oh, the pizza, pizza box recycling. Oh, pizza box. So Fernbrook Farms over in New Jersey does it. Um, although they're not the ones who initiated it, it was actually the Bordentown EAC and the this um, group, the Green Team in Bordentown, initiated it. So they apparently, I talked to the person for a while in their environmental center. Um, apparently the, the green team, I guess in conjunction with, their, with the EAC, purchased the drop-off box. Any type of box can go in there with oil, without oil, with the liner. The, you know, when, when I talked to the person from Fernbrook, he said preferably without the liner, the oil makes no difference. Um, but they take all the boxes, they use them in their farms. And the only, I guess the down part of it is that someone needs to empty the, 
the drop off box and bring it to them. Right. We talked for a while. They're not sure they can accept additional boxes from the ones aside from the ones they already get. He said he would have to talk to his head farmer, but it was something that we could possibly maybe talk to like somebody at Shady Brook or a local farm here and see if they want to do it. But I guess the big question is, do we want to try and deal with this? And then who, who would be the, the, I mean, the, I don't know if the person who the resident who brought this in front of Dan would be willing to take this up as her project. Um, Cause I know I don't have time to, empty pizza box containers and bring it over to a farm. <laughs> um, but I don't, is it something that the EAC wants to think about in, in at least purchasing the initial container? Like, do we want to talk, do we want to even think about this project? I think I do. my personal feeling is, well, forget it. Uh, yeah, I, I was probably going to conflict with uh, what Gene was going to say. But. <laughs> right. I think we have a lot going on right now, uh, especially, you know, with the styrofoam recycling. And uh, I think this might, uh, you know, diminish our impact. OK, uh, I think, you know, the styrofoam recycling has always been important to us and very successful over the years. And maybe uh, next year we might, when this COVID restriction starts changing, uh, get into the, uh, the other electronics recycling again. Uh, we do recycle our pizza boxes, okay? Gene cuts out the small portion that's oily and goes in the garbage, but 90% of the box is being recycled right now. Me too. Yeah, I mean, I recycle thing. mine too. Um, Most people are not going to bother with that, though. Yeah. yeah. They don't even know about the oil, that they could recycle the parts that aren't oily. Right. Yeah. So Linda, you, um, so that, what was that Bordentown? Green team. Now green team? Green team. And they, um, they, I think they in conjunction with the EAC are running this program in Bordentown. Right. And would they, do you know what the farmers do with it? Is it just state? They, they use it to line the fields. Um, he actually said it's, it, it, they use it as kind of a, it eventually breaks down in mulches, but they also use it as weed suppression. Mm. Oh, is, wow. this, uh, is this Fernbrook? This is Fernbrook Farms. Yeah, that place, you know, that place is, at, they've got like four or 500 acres, I think. Mm -hmm. Not only do they sell trees, but uh, they have, uh, oh gosh, and in there, that wedding. Oh, there are potential to look for trees at the Arboretum, by the way. Right. Yeah, huh. I actually I have their list, and uh, I'll take a look at that too. But um, all right, well, I'll get in touch with the resident and kind of tell her that it's something we're not looking. I mean, well, I guess if she comes back and says that she's willing to take on the responsibility of the drop-off box, is it something that we'd be think that we would be able to purchase the box itself? How much is it? I don't even know. That's the one part I don't. I need to yeah, get to budget. With. We could probably buy it. And um, does it look nice? It'd be nice to have it by the front door of the township building. Um, I mean, it looked from from what I saw from the Facebook thing. I need to get in. I only talked to the person at Fernbrook. I need to actually now get in touch with the board and town EAC and find out their what they did and everything. Um, so, yeah, I don't I'm not sure. Yeah, I would. I would. Um, I would take on some of that, Linda, because that I think that that's interesting. That there's really an option that doesn't sound like it's that much. No, I mean it's it's nothing we can start right away because we'd have to at least find a farm. Because like I said, Fern, I don't think Fernbrook has the capacity right now with what they're because they have two boxes one at their farm and one in Bordentown, that they're taking all of those pizza boxes. Okay. Wow. Um, they yeah, don't know if they have capacity to take on more pizza boxes. That's but <laughs> at this point, it's something that if, if we choose to go the next step, we're going to have to find out if we can even find a local farm that's willing to work with it right. and then move forward. Right. Okay. Well, 
you know what? I'm going to be calling. Um, I'm going to be checking with Shady Brook and uh, Charlene about the uh, pumpkin. So I'll ask about that, too. Okay. All right, now I'll find out the cost of the just the box itself. See see what they what their initial cost for that was, and then you know we can talk about it in the next meeting at this point. But it's nothing that we're agreeing to at this point. So, right. Um, all right. Um, I guess lecture series. Are we holding off on? We're still holding off on dates at this point, right? Yeah, I think okay. during the last meeting, uh, we suggested sometime in April uh, for, you know, a, a lecture. Uh, we also talked about virtual lectures being not real successful. And I think the, uh, the lectures that we've sponsored over the years, I think that in-person feeling is real, real important uh, to these. So, uh, and we do have Colleen Michaels, who develop that, uh, you know, lecture on what's bugging our trees in Pennsylvania. And she'd be glad, you know, to uh, give that, let's say, uh, next spring sometime. Okay. I'm thinking right. April might be a nice uh, <clears throat> time to do it. March, April. All right. We'll leave it on the agenda for now and um, definitely talk about it closer to January. Yeah. Okay. That's a good idea. Just a little aside, has anyone been smashing uh, the uh, spotted lanternfly or seeing them? Here there's a lot of Patterson Farm. Right in my neighborhood, we killed two on, on our back window and we were out canvassing uh, this morning and we killed one was on, on the a driveway of our judge of elections house that he just sold. <laughs> mm. They're out there. Yeah, uh, the, uh, the Team Toyota over in Langhorn, they're all over the place. Oh, really? Yeah, we told the manager, you got a deal, you, you'll lose all your shrubbery and trees. They're just act, you know, oblivious. Nope. What are you going to do? I know. Oh, it's like, you know, the uh, gypsy moth and uh, emerald ash borer and so on. <laughs> uh, what's, uh, what's the next item? Um, Web page. Every bit counts. Newsletter. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, the next uh, uh, snippet on uh, solar homes went out. I think it went out on all the, it's on the ESE web page. It's on the ESE uh, um, a township uh, Facebook page, and from there I shared it to all the community pages. So uh, I'm looking at composting for this month. And if anybody, I mean, there are millions of people who compost in our township, but I don't know exactly who's successful. Uh, I mean, there are a lot of people trying new also, so it's a really hot topic. So is there any suggestion whom I could cover who's who's got a very stable composting Can system? You cover that Kona composting. <laughs> That's a business. I know, but still, like, can you find out from them who they, if it's a, if it's a local person that are, like, find out from them who's doing, like, even just to, I know it's a local, yeah, but I mean, yeah, good idea, yeah. it's still, where do they get yeah, their, something to say, hey, this is something you can do if you don't have the land to compost. It's another option. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a good idea. We have, uh, we compost, but I, I compost, I should say, and I'm, I'm afraid I'm not very diligent about keeping uh, keeping it turned over and all that kind of thing. You know, I don't get a lot of um, mulch from it. Or yeah, no, I'm sure there are many people. Uh, it's just that uh, from the information I see, uh, I don't know unless I visit them or talk to them personally. Like who's um, who's experimenting? Like me, I'm in an experimental stage, and who has? I want to cover everybody, any case, because as long as there is interest, I think it's it's important to recognize. But it's good to start with somebody who has figured right, it out. Right. So, huh. so I will. You anyway, know what? Uh, and I, I no, also, but, but there's oh, what about like Pam? Um, there's a woman that works at Bowman's. Uh, and lives in Lower Makefield. Pam, what's her last name? Knew it. 
Pam knew it. I'll bet she composts. No, I mean, I know many people are composting. It's just that, um, uh, you know, I can't call each one of them and ask, like, you know, how are you doing and get select one from there. It's, it's good to know, get a, get a recommendation. So, I mean, I already have spoken to somebody, but I was just hoping to find somebody who's got a very stable system. Like, this is how I do it, and this is how it works year after year. But see, I think uh, she would, if she does it, that's probably, she's, I'll, I'll check with her, because she's, okay. um, you know, she's, uh, seems like a likely one to have it, to know what she's yeah. doing. Because she's yeah. an educator at, you know, she's an environmental educator. Okay, okay. So yeah. let me let me check with her anyway. Sure. And uh, uh, a lot of people are, uh, uh, I have seen some interest in people ripping off, uh, ripping part of their uh, turf area and planting uh, natives this fall. So I think um, it's a good sign. We, we are having people converting from, uh, you know, the traditional uh, horticultural approach to the yard to more, uh, you know, native wildlife orientation so you're doing one of these a month yeah actually originally i didn't want to commit to a periodicity because i didn't know how well i would be able to meet that yeah but monica just asked me for a thing do you think it's, is it going to be monthly so i just said yes and i think it's okay so far and of course uh, there are there are lots of people to cover um uh, mark's wife dara was telling me about a few clients of theirs in our area whom one could cover for solar further yeah. so in every topic one can uh, there, there are a lot of people to cover so if anybody else wants to pitch in and do a particular month on some particular topic uh, you know it's fine i mean i can do the layout part of it if I can help with that because I have a standard template. But uh, it basically what it means is it's not very much of work. Uh, it's interviewing and getting information from them and pictures if needed. Usually, uh, like for the first one, uh, Connie had had tons of pictures herself, very good ones. So I just use hers. Uh, for Mark, I took a picture of their house and he gave me the reports and I took a, took pictures of the information. He gave me the video. So um, it's interesting. So anyway, for now it's fine. But anybody else wants to join in, we can always, you know, say, okay, this month you do you do your you do one thing. Yeah. And uh, after composting, I mean, in spring I do want to get to uh, rain gardens. So I'm uh, scouting for some good rain garden option because uh, and link it with flooding. So I don't know who has a good rain garden, but I would love for your suggestions. Jeff Gall. Jeff, yeah, yeah, I think Jeff does. Uh, yeah. What's his last name? Uh, G O L L. Yeah, he used to be a member. He used to be a member when I first joined. Yeah, yeah. G O L F. I was playing golf. G O L L. Jeff. G E O F F. Golf. Okay. Is that Princeton Hydro? Jeff. Yeah, Princeton Hydro. Hydro. Oh, I see. I might have been at a presentation by him because that sounds good. Probably. Kind of, yeah, and there's some <laughs> canned information from the master gardeners on uh, rain gardens as well. I think I've actually given over the several years ago, I think I even gave a lecture. on. Yeah, what I try to do is in each piece, I try to link to more information with uh, links. Uh, but the piece itself just focuses on a person's initiative. Okay. links to the larger picture uh, impact and uh, further uh, you know wherever one can uh, get information so i'll do that also yeah okay. the abington eac has made this their major focus and project abington. we've done some great stuff on on this uh -huh. yeah, it, I'm, I'm actually feeling very bad that i didn't start with rain gardens because when i see people tearing up <laughs> their lawns and planting natives i just wish oh please wait you can actually convert <laughs> this into a rain garden <laughs> And I know you're not going to do it six months later, so uh, so uh, I feel like it. Uh, well, anyway, maybe in March one should do that. Okay. So, Paul, do you want to do some of the months? Sure. Let me think about a topic first. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's the topic is just anything that the EAC promotes. Okay. 
And uh, just let me know who and what so that we, we are not talking to the same person. Bye. All right. <laughs> I'll let you know. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> All right. Well, we on we on item nine now. Linda, we're not hearing you. You're muted. I'm not. No. Okay. <laughs> I, I, my computer has literally turned off twice during this meeting. Oh, okay. just because I don't know why. <laughs> and anyway, uh, I guess we're on the environmental stewardship. Yes. yes. Okay. Uh, I've been given that a little thought. The last meeting, uh, I wasn't too crazy about issuing an award this year because I thought the public ceremony was real, real important. But uh, I think Sumia brought up a good point that that really doesn't matter all that much. So uh, I think that it is appropriate that we should give out an award this year. And I have a couple of uh, nominations uh, that I think I discussed at the last meeting or- Just one. Yeah, okay. But anyway, uh, I mean, is everybody in agreement that we uh, should give an award out this year? Yeah, if we have to do it virtually. Yeah, okay. All right, the two uh, nominations I was thinking about, one of them, is Kevin Treber's uh, Boy Scouts. They had a project uh, where they were recycling Christmas lights, believe it or not. And I'm sure all of us are guilty about every uh, holiday putting these things in the trash and buying new ones. And they, uh, it was pretty impressive. They had hundreds and hundreds of pounds of these, and I don't exactly know uh, how they recycled them. But anyway, I thought it was a good project. But I think the other uh, nomination to me would be my favorite. And uh, that has to do with uh, Mark Bortman. Uh, Mark, as a former EAC member, and over the years, he has unstintingly offered his services, uh, his employees, the vans for our various recycling efforts uh, without a, a single dollar of compensation. And I don't see how this thing could work without somebody like the styrofoam. It couldn't work without somebody like Paul. I mean, not, not Paul. I'm sorry. <laughs> so, anyway. Uh, well, that, uh, yeah, hey, come on. I'm in my late 70s, you know. So you, you have to allow that every once in a while. Information but, processing error. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so what is that? I think that it should be awarded to... Uh, you know, Mark Bortman, you know, his company, Exact Solar. To me, the classic thing about that, it's how a local business that, of course, you know, a lot of local people support, but how they give back to the community. Uh, and I think that's real, real essential. And if more people did this, I think we'd, living, uh, we'd be living in a much better world, quite frankly. So what's, uh, what's the thoughts about that? I think both are excellent options. We should just yeah. keep them, keep it as keep both the nominees and split the award? When do we have to pick? I would, December? I would, say, I would pick right now. <laughs> uh, I don't see there's any reason why we, uh, we shouldn't. Uh, All right. I mean, what, is, what does everybody feel about that? I mean, is this, was this approved for the one payment or do we still have Yes, oh, uh, you know, I forgot to talk about that. Uh, I actually was part of the supervisors meeting uh, the, uh, on the 7th, I guess it was. And uh, because uh, Fred said that he was going to talk about our proposal that you know, we approved, I think, in June about making some uh, changes to the award. And I didn't see it on the agenda, but he said it's going to be under the uh, uh, EAC liaison uh, discussions at the end of the meeting, and it was. And uh, I talked about what we wanted to do, but the attitude was very surprising. The attorney basically said that uh, this is an EAC program and we can pretty much do what we want with the program. And uh, no motion is needed by the board or anything uh, for us to make those changes. And uh, Dan Grenier also said that, uh, and Fred was in agreement with that, and Dan Grenier said, yeah, that we also set up 
a budget for the EAC, so they have, you know, the money to, uh, you know, give an award like this. So uh, those changes are all, you know, uh, done at this stage. And uh, I was surprised. I thought they might want to discuss that, but they couldn't even find the original resolution that set that up, and they're not even sure a resolution set it up. I think there was one, but... Uh, and they said if they find one down the road sometime that they would gladly incorporate these uh, changes into a new resolution, but they didn't think that was necessary at this time. So, uh, you know, we're free to go. Yeah. As far as, the, as far as the awards are concerned, uh, I mean, I think that's just something we could vote on tonight or doesn't any, does everybody agree with that or not? Do we have a quorum? I don't know what yes. we have. Yeah, we do. We have uh, five out of seven or five out of six, actually. Um, Kevin has only done this once, right? I'm, I remember he did it last Christmas. Has he ever done the Christmas light collection before then? I don't think so. I think this was the first year. And actually what my plans are right now uh, to maybe next year, uh, based upon the nominations that we have. Basically, we don't get a lot of these, uh, you know, through the various channels where we, uh, you know, try and put in uh, information about uh, the award. Uh, it's generally EAC members having some kind of contact. Uh, and uh, that's how most of the nominations have come about. But I would think maybe uh, the Boy Scout project might be a real plus for next year. Right. Yeah. Maybe this would encourage him to do the collection again after Christmas this year. <laughs> yeah. And that's it. Yeah. I mean, if this is a one, you, you bring up a good point. I didn't think about Alan. I mean, if this is a one shot deal, it doesn't have the same impact that this is going to be an annual type thing. Nope. Depending a how different starts, thought on the lights is if he's not going to do it, after Christmas this year, is it worth us finding out how or, you know, what he did to recycle it and then us do it along with the styrofoam exactly. collection? Exactly, right after Christmas. That'd be great. You know. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Good idea, Linda. Good idea. But I think, um, uh, I mean, I, I completely agree with Alan, uh, but in order to uh, encourage them, how about not giving them a monetary award, but a mention recognition, like a certificate or something? saying that uh, this was a, we appreciate the initiative and we hope that this will continue or something like well, that. Well, the only problem with that is we've thought about doing that in the past and uh, I don't think we have because I think then there's no way the following year we could, uh, you know, give them uh, the yeah. support, if you will. No, I mean, what I'm saying is just um, uh, 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 the, an EAC mention of uh, recognition of their efforts. It's not an award. It's not this award, but just another, we're just recognizing the effort. Is that, well, to uh, get onto that, is that something you can do as a December every bit counts? <laughs> Uh, yes. And then at least that way, it would maybe prompt him to do it again, and then it would get it would be in everybody's head that, oh, we shouldn't just throw away our lights after Christmas. A very good idea. So it gets them the recognition. Yeah, this way he gets the recognition that he did it last year, and maybe you find out, like, is he doing it again this year? And it would be a way to promote it for this year. Yeah, well, I could also yeah. call him and find out. I know Kevin. I could also call him and see if they're going to be doing it. Okay. But I mean, still, like, even just to give him the recognition, I think to do it in, like, a December issue for every bit counts would be. Yeah, I think that uh, that's a, an excellent idea. That's an excellent idea. That doesn't idea. preclude us from. Yeah, I, I, that was the intention. Yeah, just, just to, to recognize, recognize it. that this is happening. Yeah. Uh, as long as that doesn't preclude us giving him an award next year. No, I, well, no, yeah, I can't not, see not why it's related would. to the award. Okay. All right. That uh, makes sense. So are we in agreement to uh, give the uh, 20, uh, I guess it's the 2020 award or is this the 20? I forget. No, this is the, well, wait, what is this? This is, I think this is, I got to look. I think it's the 2020 award. I yeah. Know this. yeah, right. It's yeah. The last okay. This is the 2020 award. Yeah. Uh, so are we all in agreement to uh, give this to uh, Exact Solar uh, 
uh, CEO and owner Mark Portman. Yes. 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 Okay, I think we should probably uh, have a motion for that. Yes. All right, I, I make a motion to give it to Mark. <laughs> to what I, I second it. Sorry, I can't think right now. Yeah, that's okay. It's all right. You got a lot of company, Linda. Believe me. <laughs> um, okay. Well, if I, we're assuming you took off for a second, uh, we'll wait till she gets back. Well, we we can give four minutes. Back. All right, Sumia. Well, us four are in favor of it, right? Yeah, okay. Yes. Oh, okay, okay. okay, Sumia, we have four people in favor of the Mark Bortman Award, and we uh, hopefully you will be as well. Yes, five. Okay, all right. So uh, <clears throat> that, that motion was made and passed then. All right. We're all so, um, uh, just just before I forget, like uh, however you uh, present to the board uh, saying that uh, uh, the EAC recognizes, et cetera. If I have a short write-up, we can send it to Monica and she can put it up on the EAC. Well, what I think we ought to do first is I ought to talk, uh, send an email to uh, our liaison, Fred, and just tell him that, you know, Fred, this is what we came up with. We assume that the board will have no issues with something like this. Uh, you know, just short and sweet. And then uh, afterwards, I will uh, uh, write up, you know, a nomination sheet uh, and then uh, probably notify, you know, Mark, uh, hopefully before we go. Well, it doesn't matter. When we're in New England, I have the computer and we have, uh, you know, contact. So that's not a big deal. But I think the first step is to uh, let Fred know what our choice is. And then after that, uh, you know, talk to uh, uh, Mark. But I'll have some uh, something official drawn up on the nomination forms and all that. Uh, but thank you for being a little persistent, uh, Sumia. I think, uh, you know, in retrospect, I think this is, uh, you know, a good thing to do, even if it has to be done virtually. Yeah, we should use our money. Whatever resources we have, I think we should spend them. <laughs> That's right. You don't it's Fred. It's Fred. Hello. Hi. Yeah. Hey. Uh, perfect timing. Joined us. Yeah, perfect timing. <laughs> perfect timing. And anyway, because uh, we were just talking about the Environmental Stewardship Award and how uh, the board basically said that this is an EAC program and they don't have to make a motion if we want to make these changes. Uh, as long as I obviously they're not completely radical that the board has no issue with it. So uh, we have just been discussing uh, the nominations for this year. And mm -hmm. uh, the five of us uh, who in attendance today have agreed that we would like to give the award to uh, Mark Bortman, whose business Exact Solar uh, mm -hmm. has been involved in the recycling efforts uh, I would say a good five or 10 years. Uh, he's supplied his employees and he supplied his vans for us to use with absolutely no compensation at all. So, uh, but we thought the, uh, the way to do this, the correct way is to run this by you to make sure that, you know, you didn't have any issues. No, I think he's a great guy to, to, uh, to give the first expanded award to. Okay. All right. That uh, yeah, that's, that's good. So uh, I will, uh, uh, and I guess you can, uh, the next uh, meeting that you have with the Board of Supervisors, uh, you can maybe just tell them what uh, what our choice is. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, if you just send me a, a, an email, so I won't forget, because the meeting's next week, and I'll, I'll, I'll do that at the, uh, the report, you know, the committee report. Okay. In the meantime, though, I will notify Mark so he doesn't hear about it uh, from the meeting rather than uh, from somebody uh, live. Okay. Uh, that could be Sounds a good thing. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you very much, Fred, for your input. That's good. Yep. No, not a problem at all. Okay. All right. Cool. Great. <laughs> um, year end review. Did everyone get a chance to look at the latest draft and are we good to finalize this? 
Yeah, I reviewed it. I think it's uh, you did a real good job on it. Uh, you know, we had uh, the, the one item that was still missing is I don't know if we need something from Paul's newsletter or not, or uh, is that essential or not? There was an, uh, initially a space for Paul to put in. There was. Um, I guess, Paul, do you want to add anything? This is for year end of 2019. Um, I don't think it's necessary. We just, you know, this you can add maybe a sense. We still have a newsletter we put out, you know, periodically. Okay. That, that's no big deal. All right. I think, I think the, big, the big thing now is going to Facebook and, and doing those type of things. You know, our website and that kind of thing. All right. I'm going to put just something at the bottom of projects pursuing in 2020 and just say, you know, we've, like you said, we have a, we have a newsletter. We continue to um, put updated information about the EHC. Leave it at that. I'm going to finalize this and send it out. Okay. Um, who who, does, who goes you're... to Barbara? Well, it goes to the Board of Supervisors. Oh, it goes to the Board of Supervisors. Okay. Yeah. All right, well, really, I have a can... couple edits. I can send it to you tomorrow. Nothing major. But okay. Just clarify this: the tree replacement and woodlands protection ordinance write-up. Okay. Make it a little clear. Yeah, I'm not going to get to this. And, and well, also, actually, it's I probably 20th. won't get to this till Friday, so don't, because I'm in the okay, field. Yeah, tomorrow. I'll put anything I change in bold so you can spot it right away. Okay. And right. make sure you change the subject because it's 2019 review. That's actually what this is. I know. It says 2018, though. My it does? <laughs> oh, it does. Oh, thank you for catching that. <laughs> yeah. But I promise I'll get this to you tomorrow. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. All right. And again, um, I've done several of these over the years, and uh, you know, I know how much work is involved in this, putting this together. And I think you really did a nice job. So. Oh, well, thank you. But we all helped in this one. But thank you. Um. Okay. I guess that's kind of well. So yeah, ends odds and ends. At least what's on the agenda is Kevin's things. Unfortunately, he couldn't attend. He's on the road. Anyone else have any odds and ends, open discussion information? Um, I think we're out of time. What? Linda's time. Well, yeah. My time. I have two minutes. I just, Actually, I have three minutes before I have to leave. Like um, ask, we technically have till 630. Yeah. Can I ask Fred, if we get our comments to Jim Majewski, say at the end of this month or a couple days after that, is that all right? Because um, he wanted them the end of this week and it's just a massive application and it takes a while to get through. Um, We've only had okay. it for a month. I zoned out. What, 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 what do you want? The, the picket preserve comments from the EAC we're probably not going to be able to get them out till the end of this month. I don't think um, it's going to be on the agenda until November 17th, if I remember correctly now. Okay. Well, we can get something uh, out by then. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I think things are on hold until the 17th okay. because of legal issues. So... Uh, if you have things ready for the 17th, I don't think there'll be an issue, but I would touch base with, with Jim first. All right. Well, he said the end of this week and I told him we can't do it. It's just, it's too much, too much material and it's all electronic, which I don't like. It's easier mm -hmm. to with hard copies, but we'll do our best. Okay. Yep. Just let them know what you're doing. Okay. And if there's an issue, let me know. All right. All right. With that, and the fact that I have to leave. Um, I'm calling this meeting adjourned. Do I hear a motion? So moved. See everybody the 31st. Yeah. All right. Thank you. And then I'm sure there'll be something coming up soon for next month when, once I get Yeah. Ahead, I Thanks for mentioning our Star From collection, Fred, at the meetings. No problem. Yeah. No problem. Coming up. All right. All right. Looking forward. Take care, guys. Everyone. See you, Billy. See ya. 31st. Bye.